Hello again. I'm going to finish up normal distribution and standard deviation. And what I went ahead and did was did all the calculations beforehand because on this one I would actually uh, advise you to use a calculator because I probably would too. I'm not going to sit there and square everything after the difference. That's actually something that I don't mind when my students do that. So what I have is I have this data right here. And it's arbitrary. It can be anything for anything. But in this case, I believe it's the population in millions of certain states. Yeah, I think that makes sense actually. And there's 11 of them right here, and I went ahead in 19, 12.3, 8.4, 6.3, 5.3, etc. The first thing you have to do when you're trying to figure out standard deviation is figure out this thing called x hat. x hat just means the mean. In order to figure out the mean, you add them all up, and you divide by how many there are. And there's 11. And when you do that, you get an approximation, and your approximation is 5.4. Now what that means is this. If I were to draw you know, some sort of line, my mean is about 5.4 away. That's just, that's just the middle of everything. Uh, what i got to then do is figure out the variance, how everything kind of fluctuates, and then from there go to the standard deviation. Now your variance is always going to be positive because you're always taking a square of it, and when you're doing the data, you're always trying to collect it in terms of the positive aspect. Uh, here's the formula right here. It's a little annoying, but I'll go ahead and explain it. You take your first x term, which is 19, and you subtract by your mean, which is 5.4, in parentheses, square it, plus. 12.3 uh, minus 5.4 in parentheses squared, all the way up until 0 0.6 minus 5.4 in parentheses and squared. Which is why I didn't uh, write the problems out, because I'm not going to sit there and do this, because it's going to take 20 minutes just to do that. And when I do that, I take that number and I divide by n, which is the number of terms that I'm working with, number of trials, and there happen to be 11, uh, number of existing data is another way to think about it. And when I do that, I get an approximate number, which comes up to 31.3. That's variance. Uh, in order to figure out standard deviation, I take the square root of each side, and it's 5.6. So basically what that means is, uh, if I subtract 5.6, 5.6, I'm one standard deviation away on both sides. 5.6, 5.6 again, two standard deviations, 5.6, 5.6, etc. And basically all that means is where the data is expected to be. And it does fluctuate a little bit. These 0.6s, 0.8s, and these 19s do fluctuate the data. It, it's just that simple. Uh, nothing's going to be perfect. If I took more data, obviously I'd have a more accurate standard deviation. In this case, the standard deviation tends to be very high. Uh, but that gets fixed when you take much better data. But it's not just about taking good data, it's about having the brains to interpret the data too. And sometimes people uh, consider it hard to take the data and they think that's some kind of accomplishment. Um, uh, that's not true. Uh, taking data is very easy. It's very monotonous. It's very remedial, actually. Uh, what's difficult is properly analyzing the data, being sophisticated with it. And actually, being good at mathematics really does help with that, but employing common sense uh, helps as well. And sometimes, uh, there's a saying that common sense isn't common. Um, yeah, sometimes that is the case. Some people read it well, and some people need a lot more training. Um, it's a little scary, but at the same time, you know, there's hope too, because you hope that people can do it correctly. So that's my tangent on uh, standard deviation. If you choose to do this for a living, incorporating statistics, make sure you can read statistics carefully. Uh, the accomplishment isn't being able to figure out or mathematically compute the statistics. That's just half of it. The other half is actually being able to properly look at it um, and having the brains and the experience to actually um, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk about it. Example, um, if I'm computing data for, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, if I'm trying to compute data in terms of uh, distribution, in terms of, um, I don't know, it, I have no idea what I want to say. In any case, let's say you're a math teacher like me. Um, you better be able to be smart enough to actually know what goes on in the classroom and not just uh, stand from an outside perspective, because that's actually quite foolish to say on these. If you don't have experience, if you can't read data properly, and you can't do it, you shouldn't be dealing with it until you learn how to do it. So you need experience, know-how, and common sense. Um, something for you to keep in mind, too, because it's actually very important, more important than you can realize, actually. Well, that's it for now. I hope that was helpful. Have a good day.